Welcome to African News Roundup. My name is Lucy. Starting off the segment, police in Kenya said they have arrested 238 people during Monday's violent protest over the cost of living, which also saw 31 police officers injured. Protesters had joined demonstrations in Nairobi and other parts of Kenya on Monday in response to a call by the veteran opposition leader, Raila Odinga. I mean, I get that you have to protest over the way the government are treating people, but why do people feel the need to insert violence to their protest? Not supporting the government as to what they are doing, being negligent to the needs of the people regarding high cost of living. But must people resort to violence before they are being heard? Now, a student has been killed, and even with all of the arrests going on, Kenya's opposition leader, Raila Odinga, vowed on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023, to continue with the campaign of nationwide protest. Moving on from that, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, on Tuesday, 21st of March, filed his petitions to the Presidential Elections Tribunal to challenge Bola Tinubu's victory in the February 25th presidential election. According to Obi of the Labour Party, he is requesting the provision of five prayers in the petition, these prayers being eligibility, 25% in the Federal Capital Territory, election cancellation, fresh elections and a fresh election without the president-elect and his vice, Tinubu and Sheitima. Just saying that for a fact that this was the tightest presidential election to come since the end of the military rule in 1999. Now to the request made by Obi, if we're being honest, looks like a dead end because the whole world saw that these elections lacked transparency. So if they're about to do this, would they actually grant him the petition that he requested for? Or would this just go on for months before it swept under the rug again? Moving on from that, the European Union is concerned that there may be collapse of Tunisia as Tunisia is experiencing an economic and political deterioration. Meanwhile, according to the EU, the EU cannot help a country that is unable to sign an agreement with the IMF and staying on that, it it is actually the duty of the president of Tunisia to sign with the IMF and implement the agreement. Hence, the situation will be very serious for Tunisia. But as it stands, the president is operating on an authoritarian drift that he granted himself since the 21st of July 2021, thus making it impossible for the intervention of the European Union. Basically, the president is just putting up the country and the people at risk of a downfall. And finally, on African news uganda's parliament has passed a bill which would criminalize people who identify as gay or a sexual minority individuals could now face lengthy prison terms if the bill is signed into law by the president Yoweri Museveni. Under the proposed legislation, friends, family and members of the community would have a duty to report individuals in same-sex relationship according to the authorities. It's not news that homosexual acts are already illegal in the East African country but now the bill seeks to go further and criminalize people on the basis of their sexual identity. Not just that, the bill also stipulates that a person who is convicted of grooming or trafficking children, even individuals or constitutions which support or fund the LGBT rights activities for purposes of engaging them in homosexual activities will face life in prison. Well, that's all I have for you on African News Roundup. Until next time, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.